In this tutorial, we're building a smart side menu, one that actually responds like you'd expect. You'll learn how to open it with a swipe, close it with another, and make sure everything just works even when the keyboard is on screen. And we're even adding resistance. So if the user pulls too far, the menu pushes back slow, intentional, and under control. By the end, you'll know how to build a side menu that feels like it belongs in a real app. We're starting with Geometry Reader. It's SwiftUI's way of letting us read the screen. It tells us how tall the view is and how wide it is. And that's powerful because now we can move things based on real screen size. Like if we want to slide a menu out by 70% of the screen width, it'll always land in the right spot, no matter if it's a small phone or a big iPad. At first, I used the default gesture. It worked fine until I dragged with two fingers, suddenly everything froze. The animation just died right there. So I ditched it. Switched to this custom gesture instead. It handles multiple fingers without breaking a sweat. No crashes, no glitches, just smooth. So here's what happens when we drag. The moment our finger touches the screen and starts moving, changed kicks in. It's like, hey, I'm tracking you right now. And when we let go, that's when ended steps in, drags over. Time to react, maybe snap the view into place, maybe slide something back. It's just those two moments, while we're moving and when we stop. So when the user starts dragging, there's one thing we really need to pay attention to, which direction are they going, left or right? Because that direction tells us what the user wants. Dragging to the right, that gives us a positive value. To the left, it's negative. And that's how we decide what to do, open the menu, close it, or ignore the gesture. Here's where we start adding rules. So take a look at this one. Basically, if the menu is closed and the user is dragging to the right, then yeah, let's track that drag. Because that's the gesture we expect when someone wants to open the menu. But if the menu is already closed and they're dragging left, that doesn't make sense, so we ignore it. This rule just makes sure we're only responding when the direction actually fits the current state. If the menu's already open, we still want the drag to feel natural. So when the user swipes left like they're trying to push the menu away, we let that happen. Now, it works both ways. If it's closed and they drag right, it opens. If it's open and they drag left, it closes. Everything else doesn't make sense, so we ignore it. The user's dragging, the menu's reacting, but they might still be in the middle of typing. And suddenly, they swipe to open the menu. Now what? Do we leave the keyboard just sitting there? Doesn't feel right. So as soon as the drag begins, we close it. It clears the space, keeps things focused, and lets the next interaction happen without anything in the way. Sometimes the user might not drag at all, they might just tap a button to open or close the menu, and that's fine. That works. But what if they change their mind halfway through? They start dragging and then tap the button at the same time. Now we've got a problem. Let's say the drag already moved the menu 20%. Then the button kicks in and tells it to move another 70%. Suddenly, the menu shoots out 90%, past the screen completely off position. That's why the moment the user starts dragging, we disable the button. Because while we're tracking the gesture, we want full control. No overlap, no double commands. Just one clean action at a time. When the drag ends, we have to decide was it a real swipe or just a small nudge. So if the menu is closed and the user dragged more than 100 points to the right, that's our signal. It means they really meant to open the menu. So we go ahead and slide it in. But if it didn't pass that 100 point mark, we treat it like a cancel, snap it back, keep things clean. Same idea in the other direction. If the menu is open and the user drags more than 100 points to the left, we close it. And one last thing, if the user drags the menu too far, we add resistance. At first it follows their finger, but once they pass the limit, we make it move very slowly, just enough to feel like the UI is pushing back. It's a subtle way of saying, that's far enough.